what's happening everybody welcome back to the channel hey i'm back out here in a garage as you can see behind me i have the cowling from our motor off um if you saw my last video um our bass our red river empire bass club tournament at lake barrier so this past weekend you'll see that i got towed in towards the end of the day um fortunately my son was out there and was able to tow me back in um so i had a little little motor problem so i just wanted to kind of go over that with you what i had and what i've, I've been doing some research uh, trying to figure out what the issue was uh, hopefully it's nothing significant uh, didn't blow the motor or lower end or anything like that so um, kind of go over that with you really quick but if you do plan on on working on your own boat uh, might be a good idea to get yourself one of these uh, manuals uh, has everything in there i think it's pretty thick pretty heavy goes over everything on the optimax and earlier efi motors as well this one is a 2001 to 2014 repair manual so good handy book to have if you can be doing your own stuff um but anyway so the problem i was having um was that i was getting a low oil alarm um after i start the motor and if you're not familiar with that as i was not familiar with it um, after you start the motor, or actually when you turn the key on, you get that initial beep, which is normal. After about 20 or 25 seconds, you get four consecutive beeps. And um, that's an indication that there's a low oil alarm. Uh, and now that's not a, doesn't mean that there's low oil in your reservoir down here. It's not low oil in there because that tank is, is pretty full. Um, but that is the low oil alarm on this tank here on the engine and I'm not sure if you can see on this engine put a light behind it you can see kind of where that oil level is and so that was giving me a low oil alarm saying that uh, that tank on the engine is low um, initially it happened down we we're down by the dam at Berryessa and then we couldn't figure out what that alarm was. We went over towards the Pleasure Cove arm, um, fished for a little bit over there, and then started the motor up, started to take off, and then got the alarm again the second time. Um, and then I do have a smart craft gauge on my dash. And that smart craft gauge, um, uh, after a minute or so, said check engine, and then it beeped and it said reduce RPM. So I did that. And then it gave me an alarm saying that, um, my oil tank was down to 4%, I believe it was. Um, so I just kind of went slow, took it easy. Um, I got from like the Pleasure Cove arm on the Narrows up to the main lake and that dropped down to 3% um, oil in the tank. And so I just shut the motor off and um, didn't want to create any additional problems with low oil. So uh, I just shut the motor down, put the trolling motor down from there. And we went for about an hour. Um, uh, on the trolling motor and made it past the skiers cove and down a little farther um, Down like halfway down the next bank. It took about an hour to go that far and used about I don't know 15 or 20 percent of my ionic batteries um, Until my son um, Met up with me and towed me the rest of the way in not sure whether or not I would have made it It was still probably a mile and a half uh, just to the entrance of Capel and then another half mile or however long as they get from there over to the boat ramp. So, um, made it in time, got to weigh in and, and all that stuff as you saw on the previous video. So anyways, just want to kind of go over what some of these problems can be. And I've been looking at my manual and um, doing some research on the issue. And there's a couple things that could go on um, with this oil tank. Um, <clears throat> kind of look at it here. So with this oil tank, there is a sensor that's on top that goes into the tank with a float. And if you're getting a, a, an oil alarm here and the tank is full, that means the sensor in here is bad. In my case, this is losing oil and it's not refilling. So there's a problem with the oil getting from the remote tank down here um, up to the motor. And the way this works is, as you can see on that block on the light here, so you can see on top of this cap, there's two hoses. Um, one hose comes from the engine to the oil tank and um, the oil tank creates pressure that uh, pumps air in here. So it's a pressurized system. 
and then the second line takes the oil from the reservoir here to the engine. <clears throat> so that's kind of the, the system in a nutshell. And so the reason I'm not getting oil up to the engine could be, you know, one of, I think, three things. One, I got a plug line somewhere, either from the engine, you know, on one of the two hoses, either to the to the reservoir or back to the engine. Um, two, I got an air leak somewhere where it's not building pressure um, inside the oil, remote oil tank. Um, and then three, there could be like a, a plug screen or, or something. And um, somewhere there's there's just a, a problem with, with the flow of the oil. Now, through some of my research and looking at other YouTube videos, um, what I kind of, I think is the problem, and I'll try and show it to you here on the motor. Let's see if I can get my light down in here. Um, now, underneath the motor, or underneath the oil tank here, if you can see that, my finger's out of the way, down at the bottom here, way down here, there's this brass fitting. And one of the videos, another YouTuber had the same problem. You see that brass fitting down there? And that is like a vacuum sensor of some kind. Um, he was able to disconnect that and um, had the oil flowing with the engine running. And once I replaced that, that, uh, that problem went away. Now the other thing is under here, again, like really hard to see. See that white, this white thing down here? It's like a one-way check valve or something. Um, I'm not sure if that's creating the problem as well, because this is the oil line that comes from the oil tank up here and connects to um, the engine oil tank. So I'm not sure what this is. I haven't been able to find it online yet. I, I think it's some kind of check valve, but I think the issue is with this vacuum valve that's right here, this brass one, it's like a $40 part. Um, and so uh, the next step here in the diagno diagnos diagnostics is to get this boat out of the garage probably next weekend. Um, fill the oil reservoir manually uh, just with the funnel. Um, start the motor up and then see if I'm getting any oil from the, from the uh, remote tank here by disconnecting the lines uh, one by one and seeing what's going on. Um, I also need to take off the cap that uh, on the remote tank next to the batteries where the fuel where the oil lines are connected and see if I can pull that out and see if there's any um, plug lines on the end. The problem is I try to get that off already and it's kind of stuck so I need to um, find a way to, to get that off maybe just tapping it with a, a mallet or something to get that cap off and then check make sure it's leak. Now the other thing is on these caps, I'll show you down here, uh, on these two caps, inside these there is a, a big o-ring that, that seals the lids and uh, maybe a good idea to check those as well to make sure that those o-rings are uh, not damaged and creating an air leak. So if there is an air leak it's either going to be on one of the hoses or one of the caps because where else would... Um, uh air go to and as you see my oil tank is is filled up to about here i always keep this tank um 70 to 80 percent full i never have to put more than a gallon in this tank to uh top it off so i'm really i'm really diligent about keeping that oil reservoir and making sure it's full all the time um, i just filled it before my first trip of the year to Berryessa two weeks ago um, so there's plenty of oil in there um, just having <clears throat> like I said that oil problem with getting oil from the remote tank to the onboard uh, reservoir and so a little more diagnostics uh, like I said I have to get the boat out uh, of the garage put a put a uh, some earmuffs on it with a hose and start it up and um, see where the plug is hopefully it's just a plug line or maybe that that valve that brass valve fitting that I showed you um, and then I should be good to go. So I'll check back with you later. Uh, I'll give you an update once I get that done and um, hopefully get back on the water soon. So thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for future updates in the next week or two um, once I get this all resolved and um, we'll talk to you next time.